Hey everyone and welcome to the Real Estate Joint Venture Club. My name is Odin and I'm going to be your host for today. We're going to be going through a little bit of uh, joint ventures and what I've discovered in regards to joint ventures over the last little while. So let's get right into our important disclaimer. So please take a second to read the disclaimer. This publication or any seminars given in relation here to is sold or otherwise provided on the understanding that the author, Odin, and the Real Estate Joint Venture Club and presenters, as the case may be, are not responsible for any result or results of any actions or actions taken in reliance upon the information contained in this publication. Please go and get advice from your professional advisors. everyone that was of course the pink panther and the jeopardy theme song i want to say a thank you for the snippets for those uh, great shows they've been around for such a long time so we're going to be talking about joint ventures today i'm really excited to go through this with you and share with you a little bit more so that you and i can do a deal together so uh, we went through a couple of joint ventures in the last presentation and i'm going to go through a couple more over here uh, this right here is a memorandum of understanding and um, this one I've only done this one uh, once or twice uh, it, I've actually done a lot more of the of the joint ventures that I'm going to be showing you in just a couple of moments this memorandum of understanding it's kind of like a proposal I've done a, a lot of sitting down and figuring out how we're going to do a deal together in real estate for instance uh, I've sat down and done a number of agreements consulting agreements because I, I am a business consultant and uh, also a business trainer and an educator. And so I've sat down with, with uh, companies and I've, I've come up with agreements and so on to provide services for them. And I've done that as well. So those are consulting, those are called business consulting agreements or uh, they, they can be uh, whatever kind of contract or agreement. So this is a memorandum of understanding. It, it allows you to begin the joint venture process by understanding what it is that each party is going to do and when I started in the joint venture business uh, specifically in the real estate joint venture business what I wanted is I wanted to understand how I could uh, how I wanted to understand how I could make money and save money with joint ventures and I wanted to understand what the lawyer knew because uh, he was making I saw his business model I have a background in business models he was making seven hundred and fifty to fifteen hundred dollars per agreement sometimes twenty one hundred dollars per agreement and I saw wow uh, it makes uh, it those are expensive so you can go to school and and get you know, degrees for that kind of money right and you go get three four five six agreements and wow you, you got yourself an education so I started to collect these agreements to understand them and to see if if I could use them but ultimately what you do is you take an agreement, you take an idea of it, and then you go and you talk to your lawyer and have your lawyer check it all out. That, that's what I would recommend. That, that's, of, of course, the right way to do business. So in this particular one, let's say that, you, that every time you go and talk to a lawyer, it costs you a bit of money. So maybe 100 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is, uh, $300, whatever it is, however, whatever lawyer you've got. And then what you want to do is you want to go there with a very clear idea first. There's some lawyers that, that uh, will help you along and make you a good client. Uh, I love those kind of lawyers. Those are the best. They're the ones that want to see you succeed because when you succeed, they succeed. That's the best. So 
in this in this particular case, you're going to work with your potential joint venture partner in whatever business model. So this particular model is for gift certificates. This is for a general business. I want to show you the idea of using memorandum of understandings and joint venture agreements for all kinds of business, not just real estate. So this is for a new customer acquisition joint venture. So that's what the idea of this particular memorandum of understanding is. So what I would do is I would go to that business and I would say, hey, do you have a gift certificate program? They would say no. And I'd say, okay, well, uh, I can come and do this for you. Let's create a joint venture. There's going to be revenues that are made, track it all, and then we could share profits. That would, and then if, if, if I give an invoice and we have all the numbers and the guy doesn't pay me, then I can go to small claims court and I can say, hey, we have this memorandum of, memorandum of understanding and the guy didn't pay me. And so this piece of paper keeps everyone honest. So the idea is to know what your mission is, what your purpose and scope of the business venture is. And this particular one is a gift certificate program. So, uh, you know, we, you can call it whatever you want. And then this is the responsibilities. And then this is financial rewards and mutual benefit. So how much so clients are willing to pay 20% of gross or net. Client agrees to pay money within 30 days. Uh, agrees to pay 20 uh, however much percentage of yearly profits there's lots of businesses out there that know that marketing marketing and sales are absolutely necessary and will give a portion of uh, of revenues earned so I mean there's so much opportunity up there or out there and business is one of the other ways to to make money in life so this right here is a memorandum of understanding as I said I've used them uh, not as many times as I have used real estate joint venture agreements. Let's get into one of those. So let's take a look at one of the real estate joint venture agreements here. I believe this is one right here. This is one of the ones from the early days I have used this agreement. I'm a part of all the other joint venture clubs or real estate clubs in one way or another. Either uh, So either I'm on their forums or um, I've, I've been a member of them. I, I know who the people are. So uh, I ended up finding out about this joint venture from a seminar that I took. And uh, so the publication, so it's another disclaimer. And then the right here is a table of contents. And I just figured it was a really good agreement. And actually, a number of myself and a number of other colleagues have used this agreement uh, successfully for, proper, for buying properties. Here's a letter of intent to invest so I really like the real estate joint venture agreements they're a lot clearer and simpler for me to understand than a memorandum of understandings you a memorandum of understanding and in business there's so many variables you have to sit down and you got to work out the details really though when you go to a lawyer for a joint venture it's pretty much already set out and done you just have to adhere to it and understand what you're getting involved in so the I, whoever it is, wishes to invest in a property known as whatever the property is as a joint venture basis with whoever the person is under the following terms. Uh, as an act of good faith, I am enclosing a check payable to B Lawyer's Trust account for $1,000, which represents the deposit towards the fulfillment of an investment towards. So it just basically outlines a letter of intent. So I understand that I can withdraw from this investment up to 10 days after the contract and purchase and sale. That's really good to know. And uh, I understand that I will have the opportunity to view and inspect the property within 10 days of the contract being accepted. So this would be an instance where you and I are working together. You have money and you have credit and I have the expertise. And so I go out with my network and we go and we find a good deal and then I get involved in that deal. And then there's a couple things that can happen. You can say you want to deal with it yourself. You, we can say that I'm going to be a part of it where there's a lot of things that we can change in this joint venture agreement. So I understand that B will present me a, a draft joint venture agreement within five days after the contract being accepted. And we have to agree what that is beforehand. So this is just an example. Everything can be changed according to what our negotiation will come out with. Every deal is unique. This agreement will be executed three days before the subjects are removed from the contract. So that would be the joint venture is going to be put into place three days before the subjects are removed. I will forward the balance of the full investment at the time by check payable to B's lawyer and trust for the approximate of X amount of dollars. I understand that the property or deed, 
or indeed any real estate may not be suitable investment for me. So just a little bit of a disclaimer. Real estate investing has its risks associated with it. There is no guarantee that the property will raise in value. Indeed, it could drop in value. I further understand that no information presented to me in any form or by anyone is to be taken or recommended to purchase a property or indeed any real estate. So this is really important. I understand and acknowledge that I've been advised by B to seek independent legal advice, accounting, tax, investment, and financial planning, planning advice related to the purchase of the property prior to the removal of the conditions with respect to the purchase of the property. I understand that the document in this letter of understanding only, I understand that this document is a letter of understanding only, and it is intended, not intended to be a binding contract. So this gives a lot of leeway for us to be able to work together. If you want a copy of this, let me know. I'll send it off over to you. Certificate of Independent Legal Advice. So I always recommend you go and get your own independent legal advice. So we'll make sure that this is done as well. And I would recommend that any joint venture partner that you're sitting down with uh, does this also. It's really important that we all be on the same page and understand where we're coming from. Now, let's say we find a property and we agree that I'm gonna do this, you're gonna do that, you can do this, I can do that, you can't do that, I can't do this and we put it all down in an agreement. And let's say this is the joint venture agreement that we came up with. So you put your name or my name first, because I would be A or B. Uh, let's just see what it says here. Wishes to invest in a property. Joint venture is the B under the following circumstances. So you're gonna, so I would be the B person in this particular case, okay? The corners have purchased or agreed to purchase a property corners wish to enter into an agreement to set forth the prospective rights and obligations in respect to owning a property. So let's say you decide, oh, this deal's so good, I want to do it alone. Let me buy you out, Odin. Okay, we have the opportunity to have me bought out. Uh, you're going to say, oh, Odin, this is, uh, uh, I don't want to do as much work on this property. I want you to do more work. Let's give you a little bit more. Perfect. I, I like making a little bit more. That's, a, that's great. So whatever it is that we agree to, you want to do a little more work and I do a little less, you get paid more, fine with me. Whatever it is that we're going to do, we're going to put it out here in this joint venture agreement. So the sooner that you understand what a joint venture agreement has in it, the better off we're all going to be. You're going to be able to go out and actually look at agreements and understand agreements and talk to your lawyer with knowledge and, and actually have information. So this is real. This is the stuff that most investors never shared. And if you do share them, uh, you pay a lot of money for it. So here's here it is. So what we have is we have interpretation. Typically what I do for my joint venture partners is I'll go through this step by step, a little bit slower. We'll talk it through each and every point. And then what we do is have you go talk to your lawyer. And if you have any questions and you ask the questions, you go ask those same questions to the lawyer you find out what it is that you need for yourself to protect yourself and then you come back and what we do is uh, I talk to my lawyer and we go back and forth and we change it until it's acceptable. So this right here is the purpose of the agreement, uh, the purpose of the, form the formation of the joint venture. The purpose of the agreement is to coordinate the ownership by the co-owners and their separate undivided interest in the property set forth, set to set forth the rights and the obligations between the co-owners. So you can see, for greater certainty, it is understood that the activities of the co-owners hereunder will not require the acquisition by them as co-owners of any additional real estate property or interest therein, unless the co-owners unanimously agree to do so. The co-owners acknowledge and agree that they have acquired the property as an investment and each proposes to hold his or her respective interest in the properties for an indefinite period of time as set forth herein. Then we talk about the title, tenancy in common, the relationship of the co-owners, and you can probably pause it and read each and every one. We talk about the term, we talk about trust, we talk about the registration of the trust. So as a joint venture partner, I have bought into deals with cash at various different times. I've bought in with cash before, during, and after a deal. 
depending on what was negotiated with the joint venture partner. Uh, I've bought in, I mean, there's really, there's no limit to your ability to think of something to do as a joint venture. Uh, as long as your lawyers agree and everything is legal and you have you, your joint venture partners agree, it's, it's all good. It really is a beautiful business. Everyone needs to be on the same page though and understand their responsibilities associated with the joint venture. So we have the registration and it's very important to have registration. If you're putting money in something, you want to make sure that that is secured and you want to, you want to guarantee that you're going to be able to protect your money. And you understand that there's risks associated with real estate. What you do is you mitigate these risks. So, uh, you know, I mean, there's a risk when expert plays a guitar that the string may break. So the guitar player still plays regardless, regardless of the risk. So in this particular case, we're wanting to mediate those risks based on this agreement. So we get legal advice. We talk about management. The co-owner shall be in charge of the management operations of the property. So that's going to be the co-owners hereby create the position of financial manager. And very often, I'm the financial manager and appoint a financial manager's name in Schedule A to conduct the day-to-day -day financial affairs. Can the financial manager change? Yes, it can. I recommend it does. I recommend that each joint venture partner help each other with it, their strengths and weaknesses in this particular case. We treat each other like human beings that is on a joint venture together. Go figure. It's exactly what it is. They're going to be meeting people who have more experience and less experience and the idea is to fill those gaps of inexperience because I know that one thing is that every day that goes by I'm practicing life a little bit more and a little bit better than I was the previous day. That's encouraging to me. So, meeting of the co-owners. How will the meeting of the co-owners take place? What about if there's major decisions? Who will make those major decisions and what, who is going to pay for those? Very important questions to ask and here are the answers. Right there in a legal document. Paid, I think it was $750 for this document an important doc <laughs> it really is so appointment of the bankers so determination of signing authorities of the bank account is there going to be one or two signing authorities the appointment of the property managers or is it going to be self-managed hire of any employees salaries the financial manager property manager any other employees lease transfer mortgages pledges and other I you know other dispositions of the property capital expenditures not expeding so this is when made these are major decisions we have to come up and talk about so duties of the financial manager so here are all the duties of the financial manager and it's important to know who's going to do the work I really recommend that all individuals getting involved in the real estate business either independently because they are running a business uh, they're basically if you're running it uh, running the business hundred percent yourself you are the financial manager so if you're putting the money in you can stay the financial manager if you want to appoint a financial manager, you can do so. If you want to be a part of it, do so. I recommend that every part of the joint venture, both parties, contribute to the management of the financial manager. It, in my experience, I found that this is what what will work the best. And so next, the active financial manager shall, shall bind the co-owners. It's important to know. Uh, the manager shall report and take directions of the instructions of the co-owners. That's important to know. So you can override the financial manager's decision. It's, it's a, you can hire third parties. Remuneration of the manager. We talk about notices regarding conflict. We talk about scope of authority, in, indemnification. All of this is important, financial matters, initial financial contributions. I'm not even done, guys. I'm only halfway through. I want to be done for you very, very shortly here. Additional financial contributions. You can see by knowing this and going through it and having it, that it makes a big difference in your business. We spend, again, a couple hours going through these joint venture agreements. I will be sharing with you an opportunity I have. Uh, how do you sell a joint venture agreement if you need to sell it? How can you assign that agreement? Or how do you amend an agreement? And I have both an assigning agreement and an amending agreement, which I'm going to show you guys. 
and it's going to allow you to have a collection of all these agreements uh, so that you can move forward with joint ventures confidently. I ask you to become a member of the JV Club, please, and, and do a deal with me. There, this, is, this is the best way to learn is to actually do a deal and put your cash in something that will bring a return. So we talk about default. So here we have events of default. So what happens if there is a default? What happens if there's an inability to pay debts? Or what happens if there is a, a creditor that comes out uh, saying that they want something from one of the joint venture partners? Or what if there's a bankruptcy? All of this. What if there's an appointment to a trustee? Or a petition of, so what if all of this is happening? Well, it's all laid out here on what it is that you have to do. So a sales of interest on failure to cure default all of this is right here so uh, and this stuff happens appointment of an appraiser other remedies inden inden indemnity transfer of ownership I had a hard time with that one <laughs> right of re first refusal so if if someone's going through a difficulty the other person can say do you want to buy it and then there's a compulsory buy sell that's in this agreement there's other agreements um, there's uh, there's drag along rights for instance was a new one that I saw that the lawyer put in some of the other agreements I didn't know what that was. There's guarantees, indebtedness, in the event of a, of a passing or a death, insurance, purchase and sale, price, life insurance proceeds, payment delivery, accounting, bank accounts, obligations. You can see it's just really a fantastic power of attorney. Very, very important. Uh, an enduring power of attorney, this agreement actually acts as a power of attorney. So that's uh, that, in this particular case an arbitration. So this is what's important is the schedules. So all of the body over here, all of this can be changed and adapted based upon your reading through it. And it's reading through it and making sure you understand. And I know I'm going, going through it fast, but there's quite a bit of to go through. And you go through that with your lawyer. You understand it first. You ask questions. You think about this or that. So then what you do is you have additional financial contributions. Let's say there's negative cash flow. Who's going to pay for that? What about if there's repairs or a top-up reserve? Who's paying for all of those and for what percentage? Who's the accountant? What about closing costs? Do the closing costs get reimbursed at the end as a part of the initial down payment or initial, yeah, the down, initial down payment as it is right there? Declaration of trust. In this particular one, there's a declaration of trust. In other ones, I found out that it's important to actually have the ability to register a mortgage as well. So here's the initial financial contributions. So those are the people who put the initial money down. So the initial down payment, the initial closing costs, and if there is any kind of reserve fund. There's the interest, what interest means. Negative cash flow, if there is any negative cash flow. Rental percentage participation. So this might be able to be turned into, for instance, a rent to own. Here we have the venture percentage interest. So this is how much you're each going to be earning in, in regards to this particular deal. Here's a declaration of trust. And then life insurance policies. And it, it's showing you how to keep it all together. When I first started off in this, I, I didn't really uh, understand how to keep all the documents. So what I've done now is I've, I keep one hard copy document that is signed by both parties. I want to get two of those, obviously. I'm going to keep one with my lawyer and I want to have one for myself and I have a digital copy and another original is going to go over to the uh, to the joint venture partner and then uh, from there I have those original closing documents so I have the joint venture agreement closing documents contract for purchase and sale typically uh, I have to say I'm a lot more organized now than I was in my earlier days and then in regards to the bookkeeping you want to take the account and ideally what you're doing is you're having the rents go in and then get your monthly statement and the monthly statement is going to allow you to say what you paid and what has come in ideally you have a free account somewhere that you're able to have both parties able to look at the bank account it's a little bit more work if you have a lot of joint ventures but in my experience this is the, the best way to do is to have, if you have one property, one separate account, two properties, two separate accounts, and all the way through so that each party can know what's happening inside of that account. If money has to be put in, then one of the joint venture partners can put the money in and it's easily easy to track that on a 30-day basis. So on the 30-day basis, what you're going to do is you're going to just put that all into a file for your accounting because that's your bookkeeping. 
and then any repairs that are going to be done is going to, are going to be kept in a particular file for that unit. So whatever plumbing repairs, whatever maintenance repairs, whatever painting is done, and then another file you're going to have the the rental agreements. So ideally you're going to have the application for rent which has all of the tenants information on there and you need that information because in case the tenant does damage you want to make sure that you're able to proceed in court after them. It's an unfortunate part of debt collection is a part of business guys I'm sorry to say it but it really is and you, you're setting everything up for making sure that in case somebody is is like that that you have all the evidence and proof and documents. So. You put all of the repairs, the tenancy agreements, you, the application, the rental agreement, and then each and every single one of the deposits that are made, of course, is going into the bookkeeping. And then you have a move out inspection, and then, of course, you'd like to have some kind of digital pictures. And you want to duplicate what you have offline, online. That's your ideal scenario. So I, I hope that uh, this has been helpful to you, a little bit of what I've been doing and uh, practicing over the last number of years. There's a, many more joint ventures to go through and much more business to go through. I'm hoping that this will start you off in realizing that joint ventures are a reality. So this letter to, of intent to invest would be the first step for us to complete. Email me, say you're interested in working with me. I can only work with a couple of people. I have uh, some people that are interested in buying apartment buildings, so, so I'm having them fill this out. And then I'm going out there and making sure that uh, that there is a deal uh, that we're going to be able to do. So if you want to be one of those people, let me know. Thanks again for being a part of this presentation. Remember that you can go and be a part of the Real Estate Joint Venture Club. So here we go. I have a commercial. I guess it's all the way down here. There we go. So we have monthly meetings. We have financing by your documentations. It's how did you want to make sure that the people you're doing business with has their have their financing binders prepared. It's just real common sense, and you set your goals based upon your financing binder. So, uh, what you can do is there's a couple kinds of goals that you can set. We're in a world that says that we need to have certain amount of money in order to contribute. So, if you're looking for a lifestyle, you can create intangible lifestyle goals. That's for sure. But when it comes to buying and selling real estate, you're in this business and you're starting any kind of business because you want to see a profit. You want to turn a profit. So the financing binders are goal setters for you to see where you've been and where you are. It's kind of like your CRA tax returns. You can see the ups and downs that happen based upon that. There's monthly training webinars as well. We've got a three to six hour training webinars. Look out for those. We've got special invitation mastermind groups. I've just made an invitation. So if you're watching this, put your hand up. We have deals done for you and actually all of this is a, a process to show you a deal that I currently do have and then all of this is free every month and we do have the $9.99 option. I recommend you sign up for that and remember I have a triple opt-in process so uh, there's no fooling around here. When you go to the website you're gonna have one opt-in that goes to a membership, uh, a membership email site and then you're gonna have to sign in to what you want for your membership. And you go through that process and then you're in and we can start talking back and forth and hopefully do a deal together remember share this with as you can forward this off off share this with other people it's important that other people actually know this information uh, it's uh, very important so thanks again uh, th thanks yeah thanks again thanks again we'll talk to you really soon